Jake refused to accept Misha's ridiculous excuse. He retorted in a snide manner. But Deputy Peak Lord, what if we can get Lord Sect Leader's permission instead? Then we won't need to consult the leader of the Justice Peak at all. Junior Brother Hampton is right, Richard chimed in. After that, he said goodbye to everyone and planned to fly away from the Justice Peak and go to the secret realm where the sect leader was cultivating to get his permission. Everyone, please wait for a moment. I will go and get the sect leader's permission, he explained. Richard, the sect leader is usually busy. Don't disturb him because of such a small matter, Misha quickly intervened, seeing that Richard indeed meant to keep his word. Although the Justice Peak wanted to replace the sect leader's faction and become the top power in the sect, before their strength truly surpassed the sect leader's faction, they could not fall out with the sect leader's faction. If Richard asked for the sect leader's permission, it would surely be granted, and in the end, the scandal of the Justice Pavilion would be exposed. Junior Brother Hampton, what do you propose? I am willing to negotiate, Misha offered. At the same time, he could not help but feel a degree of frustration toward his son for starting this fiasco. Since Jake had Bartleby's backing, how could the Justice Pavilion lock him up without good cause? It's simple, Jake commented, hoping to incite Misha further and begin the battle he had come here to fight. He paused dramatically, then continued, Release Mona, Nikolai, and Dembel at once, and clear them of all charges. No problem, Misha chimed, not wanting to see his brethren suffer further. Jake continued, Secondly, my three good friends have been suppressed by you for such a long time. Both their bodies and souls have suffered serious injuries. Your Justice Peak must provide sufficient resources to make up for this. Jake began to count on his fingers, mystifying all. He then submitted a demand that stunned Misha. Mona, Nikolai, and Dembel are all genius disciples who are about to break through to the energy-transforming period. They want to make up for the injuries to their body and soul. They will each need a lower level 8 warming fruit and a lower level 8 cooling wind fruit, a celestial sphere pill that can raise cultivation talent, and 20 upper rank 8th grade essence condensing pills, 10 upper rank 7th grade healing pills, 1 million 7th grade middle rank spirit stones, 500,000 6th grade middle rank spirit stones, 100,000 level 5 intermediate spirit stones, a thousand upper level four spirit stones. Impossible, Misha interrupted before Jake could make even more unreasonable demands. The price that Jake had proposed just now was absurdly high. It would perhaps befit a peerless genius of the faction, but Mona, Nikolai, and Dembel were by no means top geniuses, and, more importantly, they weren't disciples of the Justice Peak. There was no way Misha was going to comply. I'm not willing to negotiate, Jake shot back, raising his eyebrows. He then continued, The amount of compensation that I proposed just now is only half of what I calculated. I haven't told you the rest of the requirements yet. You are unreal, Misha exclaimed. But then his gaze shifted to Bartleby, and he thought of the giant palm that had covered the sun not too long ago. He changed his tone as he added, Jake, there's no need to become hostile. List your remaining conditions. He was anxious to understand Jake's bottom line. Lastly, the Justice Peak will make a statement to all other major powers of the Southern Domain. It will include a clear indication that capturing Mona, Nikolai, and Dembel was a mistake on the part of the Justice Peak. It will state that they are innocent. Further, you will apologize to them in front of me and my master, Jake proclaimed. Jake. We will let these friends of yours go, but the other two requests are absurd. There is no way, Misha declared, a surge of anger building in his heart. Facing the other powers of the Southern Domain and offering apology would no doubt prove humiliating to the Justice Peak. Surely that would be the end of the faction, as some powerful entity would demand that it be disbanded. This would eliminate any possibility that the Justice Peak could become the true leaders of the sect in the future. 
Misha went on for emphasis. You are clearly not a reasonable person, so we will need to find another way to resolve this, um, disagreement. I am willing to hear other options still. Though Misha had every desire to lock Jake up on the spot, he was still well aware of Bartleby's presence and did not want to incite him further. Jake, who was only a peak fifth-level essence-gathering stage warrior, was not even worthy of Misha's attention. All right, Jake proclaimed, nodding his head. He then turned and looked at Bartleby. After getting a silent okay from his master, he raised his spirit blade and rushed toward the Justice Pavilion. He threatened, Since there is no room to negotiate, I will charge into the Justice Pavilion with my saber and save my friends with my own hands. Jake's action of taking up his spirit blade and charging toward the Justice Pavilion made the Justice Peak experts blood boil. However, they were also comforted by the idea that a puny fifth-level essence-gathering stage warrior did not stand a chance against the Justice Peak, which was the largest faction in the sect. What gave him the confidence to do such a thing? What gave him the confidence to say such bold words? <clears throat> Just as everyone was wondering what gave Jake his utter confidence, Bartleby lightly coughed. When everyone's attention shifted to him, he commented with an ironic smirk, This brat has always been arrogant and conceited. He has never taken seriously the immensity of heaven and earth. So I hope Justice Peak can teach him a good lesson for me. The Justice Peak experts were puzzled by Bartleby's words. It seemed the master wanted them to teach his disciple a lesson. It was true that through his recent actions, Jake had just formed an irreconcilable grudge with the Justice Peak. But could it be that Bartleby was willing to give up on his one and only disciple? When Alicia heard Bartleby's words, she immediately became anxious. She hoped that she could help Jake. So she complained to Carson while looking at Richard pitifully. Brother, how could Bartleby say such a thing? Isn't this the equivalent of signing a death warrant for Jake? It's just beyond me. Being stared at by a peerless beauty that could move one's heart with a single breath, Richard did not say anything. Helpless, he only explained, Alicia, don't worry. Given Junior Brother Hampton's relationship with Bartleby, there is no way he would allow his precious disciple to be harmed. This is a test, or perhaps a trick? Sure enough, just as everyone was standing there puzzled, Bartleby continued, But everyone knows that I, Bartleby, only have one disciple, that brat. And since he is arrogant and conceited, it makes sense that I should teach him his lesson. Indeed, there is nothing I would rather do right now. He paused for effect, then looked straight at Misha and commented, Misha, I will make a deal with you. With this central square as the starting point, Jake will make his way into the Justice Pavilion, fighting all the way and no doubt cutting down many Justice Peak disciples. You can send all the disciples of Justice Peak and Justice Pavilion to stop and kill him. But the prerequisite is that the cultivation base of any disciples who try to stop him must not exceed the divine soul stage. If this brat falls at the hands of disciples below the divine soul stage in the Justice Peak, I will feel no sorrow or regret, and I vow never again to seek revenge on the Justice Peak. He paused again and looked around, then added, However, if someone who has reached the Divine Soul Stage, or has surpassed the Divine Soul Stage, dares to attack my disciple, then don't blame me for being ruthless. I will once again remind you of why I am called the Butcher. Alicia, did you hear that? Richard immediately queried. He had hoped Bartleby's reasoning would improve Alicia's mood and reassure her, but she was still wearing a frown. He knew her anxiety had not been abated, so he offered, Alicia, don't worry. 
Although Bartleby sounds tough and uncompromising, I promise if Jake were to encounter any real danger, he would surely intervene. Meanwhile, Misha felt satisfied by Bartleby's offer, but he wanted a guarantee, so he pressed, Senior Brother Bartleby, how do I know you will honor your word? Do you want me to swear on the sect rule book? Bartleby challenged. That's excessive, Misha retorted, wanting to avoid any oath-taking. However, Misha, who was familiar with Bartleby's personality, knew that Bartleby would save Jake no matter what, and that this arrangement was merely a means for him of moving the conflict forward. Thinking of this, Misha instructed a peak divine soul period elder beside him, Go and gather all disciples of the Justice Peak and the Justice Pavilion who are at the Essence Gathering stage and above. Misha knew at this point that only the top disciple of the sect stood a chance of defeating Jake, who fought at a level far above his cultivation base. Understood, said the Elder. Both Misha and the Elder knew that the peerless geniuses of the Justice Peak had been purposely trained for such an attack and they would be ready to strike with gusto. Thirty seconds! You have thirty seconds! Jake shouted, pointing his spirit blade at the Justice Pavilion. He had given them a time limit to organize their forces. After all, he was still in control. Sure, Misha commented casually, as if unafraid. He then turned to the remaining disciples on the scene and commanded them. All of you, temporarily stop Jake from climbing the mountain and wait for the true experts of Justice Peak to come and take care of him. Understood, they replied in unison, secretly relieved that they would not have to face Jake alone. As for the disciples who had just arrived and had yet to witness Jake's ruthless means, they were somewhat dissatisfied with Misha's arrangement. Could it be that with their essence gathering stage advanced cultivation base, they still couldn't kill this fifth level essence gathering stage disciple in front of them? Although they were dissatisfied, the rules of the faction made them forcefully suppress their resentment. They could only obediently listen to Misha's arrangements. Three, Jake began the countdown. He slowly raised his right hand and again pointed the spirit blade at the Justice Pavilion. Two, Jake's muscles tightened. One, he rolled his shoulders. An aura that caused the heavens and earth to change color and the surrounding environment to freeze rose from his body. He stepped onto the path leading to the pavilion. As soon as he advanced, hundreds of Justice Peak disciples began furiously rushing toward him, facing the incoming enemies from all directions. Jake didn't turn around to face them, Instead, he transformed his vital spirit into a huge green dragon, a white tiger, and a red vermilion bird, using these three spirit objects to deal with the enemies behind him. Meanwhile, he welcomed the incoming enemies from the direction of the Justice Pavilion. The peak sixth level force could freeze a peak essence gathering stage warrior. Even pre-divine soul period warriors experienced profound limitations in its wake. Therefore, the disciples' facial expressions changed dramatically when they were within the range of the attack. Some of the experienced disciples instinctively wanted to retreat when faced with this kind of force. Some of the impulsive disciples were trying their best to squeeze in front of Jake. They wanted to use the spirit weapons in their hands to cut down this madman who had dared to provoke the Justice Peak. There were many opponents that had rushed into the range of the attack, so Jake didn't need to use the movement technique. He also didn't need to use the powerful intermediate sword method martial technique. He just needed to use the basic saber technique and primary rank blade method martial skill. Indeed, his opponents were so restricted by the force, it was easy to move through them one by one. Three minutes later, Jake was already halfway to the Justice Pavilion. He was standing proudly on the mountain road with dozens of warriors fallen behind him, looking at the ruthless Jake, whose expression had not changed at all. 
Everyone on the scene was shocked. Even those who were standing in the air and had broken through to the divine soul stage were taken aback, for it seemed that despite having just taken on a large portion of the Justice Peak disciple population, Jake was entirely unfazed. He wasn't even out of breath. Jake, who had his back to the central square, was dressed in light blue clothes. Under that strange red light, he looked like a demon that had walked out of the blood lake, giving people a sense of fear. He was like a blood demon, and the elders of the sect could not help but recall Bartleby's similar actions from a century before. Indeed, the blood demon title suited this young man well. Richard commented, Jake is undoubtedly an unprecedented level genius and the kind of rare warrior who appears once every 10,000 years. However, his killing intent is too strong. After today's matter is settled, I must have a chat with him. Let him cultivate his body and nourish his body for a period of time and properly eliminate the demonic nature in his heart. As he spoke, Richard stared at the huge green dragon hovering above Jake's head and the red vermilion bird soaring behind him. Jake, who was standing beside the white tiger, continued walking toward the Justice Pavilion without turning his head. After Richard had spoken, Carson and Pierre nodded their heads. It seemed only Alicia was in disagreement. She gently shook her head because she knew that Jake's current surge was only the beginning of his advancement to the peak. As his cultivation base grew higher and higher, his strength would become more and more fearsome. In the future, he would eliminate even more geniuses and experts. Fortunately, everyone was attracted by Jake's sensational performance. No one noticed Alicia's strange expression and actions. Otherwise, with Richard's gossipy personality and Carson's concern for her, she surely would have been in trouble. Let's go. Standing on the road leading to the Justice Pavilion, Jake instructed the three spirit objects beside him. Arr. 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 The huge green dragon, the white tiger, and the red vermilion bird all sounded out. It was as if they were real animals rather than spirit objects. They cooperated with Jake's orders. Meanwhile, the realistic appearance of the three spirit objects had completely shocked everyone present. Even Bartleby, who had reached the supreme level peak, was also looking at the three spirit objects that Jake had created with surprise. With his eyesight, he could tell that the animals had been formed from the energy of the vital spirit with just a glance. However, something nagged at him. There was a unique quality to these spirit animals, something he had never seen before. He felt that if the three spirit objects maintained their current shape, perhaps one day they would really be able to walk out of an illusion and become real divine beasts. Following the path that led to the Justice Pavilion, Jake had climbed nearly 600 feet. During this time, none of the experts of Justice Peak and Justice Pavilion had been able to stop him. However, when he reached this point, he saw a man in brown clothes. He was holding a top-grade spiritual sword, but his cultivation was only at the peak ninth level of the Essence Gathering stage. What? Although his opponent was still at the Essence Gathering stage, the energy exuded from his body wasn't any weaker than that of a pre-divine soul period warrior. This point alone was enough to show that the young man before him was his equal. He was a genius who could surpass his own strength and challenge those who were at a higher level than him. I never thought that Misha would send out a genius disciple from the Justice Pavilion so soon, Pierre mused in surprise when he saw the sudden appearance of the young man. Senior brother, do you know this man? Alicia chimed in surprise, deeply concerned about Jake. Indeed I do. His name is Averick Benson. He entered the sect one year earlier than me, and he was the number one expert among the disciples of the outer sect, Pierre explained. As he spoke, he could not help but be distracted by Alicia's beauty. Senior brother, what is his true strength? Alicia continued, wanting to know all the relevant details. 
Averick's talent is outstanding, and he has rich combat experience. His attacks are ruthless. Furthermore, when he broke through to the energy transforming period, his talent has reached the level of a top genius. At the same time, he is lawless, as you would expect from a Justice Peak disciple, Pierre cautioned. After listening to Pierre's introduction, Alicia became even more anxious and concerned. Given his peak fifth level essence gathering stage talent, Jake could barely fight ordinary pre-divine soul period warriors. Only with the help of the Force could he have the strength to fight pre-divine soul period warriors and defeat them in the end. This new opponent presented another level of challenge. I will defeat you, Averick roared as he saw Jake take a step forward. Then he charged at tremendous speed. But a few seconds later, it was like he had hit an invisible barrier. He frowned. Having watched the events from the Justice Pavilion, he knew Jake was capable of deploying the Force, and that this skill essentially froze his opponents in their tracks and solidified the air. Yet he had assumed, as one would, that this type of attack was only effective against ordinary disciples. It surely would not impact a top genius like him. This was why he had decided to charge toward Jake alone in the first place. But perhaps he had miscalculated the situation. When Averick charged into the range of the Force, he immediately discovered that his forward speed was restricted by nearly eight layers. As he continued to get closer to Jake, the Force's restriction on him also became more and more powerful. At this point, Averick knew well that he was no match for Jake, so he instinctively wanted to retreat. He wanted to leave the range of the Force right away. Unfortunately, the opponent he faced was a freak of nature who had precise control over the situation of the battle. Just as he was about to retreat, Jake suddenly accelerated. The high rank movement technique allowed him to approach Averick at lightning speed. Averick, whose speed was restricted by the momentum, could do nothing to evade his opponent, and the closer Jake got, the stronger the solidifying force became. Originally, he could only limit the speed of the 8th level. However, when Jake was only 10 feet away from him, he had already been restricted by the 9th level. Though their true strengths were not too far apart, the fact that Jake was able to unleash 200% of his strength and Averick was only able to unleash 10% of his strength was a decisive difference. Averick could only take one last admiring look at Jake before he was summarily cut down. Meanwhile, Pierre, who had just been talking about how impressive Averick's cultivation base was and how doubtful he was that Jake could defeat him, let out a gasp. In fact, Jake had finished the job in a single strike. This felt to Pierre like a slap in the face, and he was especially embarrassed by being proven wrong in front of the peerless beauty Alicia. Damn you, Averick. I have praised you for being a rare young genius in the world. You are too disappointing. You can't even withstand a single strike from Junior Brother Hampton. You have truly disappointed me, Pierre exclaimed. Alicia, on the other hand, let out a heavy sigh of relief. She couldn't help but laugh at Pierre's frustration in the face of being proven wrong. Yet Richard interrupted her thoughts, explaining in a careful tone, It's not that Averick is too weak, but that Jake is uniquely strong. If you want to defeat Jake, you have to be at least a full major stage above him, or else you have to figure out some way to counteract the force. It's that simple. Richard paused for effect, and then continued. That's why, if you encounter an opponent who can control the force in the future, you should probably just turn around and avoid the situation entirely. You are right, senior brother, Pierre conceded. Jake snatched up Averick's storage bag and spirit blade, and then continued on his path to the Justice Pavilion. After advancing about fifty feet, though, he abruptly stopped in his tracks, because in front of him there was a pair of brothers who looked close to the ninth level of the essence-gathering stage. 
They were staring at him coldly. More intimidating, they were emitting an energy that was at the pre-divine soul period. Richard, do you know who these two men are? Alicia quickly queried when she spotted the confrontation. Yes, I know them. They are brothers. The one on the right is called Sarkis Rose. The one on the left is called Stavros Rose, and he is younger, Richard explained, nodding his head. Senior brother, how strong are they? Alicia continued, getting straight to the point. She had little interest in their background or pedigree, and was singularly focused on learning what sort of threat they posed to her dear Jake. Richard hesitated to answer. He knew that the Rose brothers were among the top 100 disciples in the sect, but he did not want to talk them up too much, as he had made that mistake already, only to be proven wrong by Jake. Meanwhile, the brothers did not hesitate to confront Jake. There you are, shouted Sarkis. He sneered at Jake as he continued, Kid, you are making Justice Peak your enemy. This cannot end well, I hope you know. I advise you to quickly kneel down and plead, and hope we are in a good mood. That is your only chance at seeing another day. As Sarkis closely studied Jake, he hoped to discover the flaws in his strength or character. Hmm, as I look at you two and study your cultivation bases, I figure you must be twins, Jake commented. That's right, we are twins. I am Sarkis Rose, and this is Stavros. Sarkis explained in an excited tone. What exquisite names, Jake commented in an oddly upbeat tone. He ignored the confused looks on the brothers' faces and went on. Before I became a disciple of a sect, in my hometown, I knew a pair of twins. It was interesting. They were able to communicate with each other mentally, and although they were born from the same mother, their biological fathers were not the same person. But this was a long time ago. Jake did not add out loud that he was in fact referring to acquaintances from prior to his transmigration. That was not a secret he wanted the twins, or anyone else, to know. Impossible. Twins must be of the same father and mother. Otherwise, they are not twins, Sarkis spat back. Yeah, I thought the same thing at that time. So I immediately sent someone to invite the mother of the twins and the two fathers to come over and interrogate them in detail. Can you guys guess what happened? Jake's fishing tone not only made the Rose brothers focus their attention on him, the experts in the air, the experts from the Justice Peak, and Bartleby and Richard also listened attentively. What's going on? Sarkis demanded as he wanted to provoke the brothers on the topic of how two twins could come from different fathers. You really want to know? Jake shot back with a serious expression. Of course I want to know, Sarkis emphasized. Jake let out a sigh and explained. Well, according to legend, it is possible if the mother is promiscuous. He knew the statement would make the twins blood boil, and that was his intention. He glanced at Alicia, who gave him a disapproving look. Nonetheless, he continued, It's all a matter of alchemy. But look, the evidence is right in front of us. You and your brother have completely different personalities. You are outgoing and forthright, whereas he is silent. You must have different fathers. You are courting death, Stavros intervened, unable to contain the passionate rage burning in his heart. Therefore, the two of them who originally had not intended to take the risk of getting close to Jake, finally rushed toward him while screaming in anger. Seeing that they had been completely enraged and were trying their best to rush into the range of Jake's attack, Misha frowned slightly. He had arranged for the Rose brothers to fight behind Averick because their joint attack was powerful. However, their speed was restricted and they were unable to use the joint attack at this point. They were thus weaker than Averick, so Misha had already guessed their fates. However, he knew that Jake had used his words to provoke them. He had forced the Rose brothers to lose their minds, and he felt a trace of fear in his heart. At the same time, he was glad he had not faced Jake's verbal sparring skills. They would no doubt have driven him mad by this point. Junior Brother Hampton is truly a genius with his tongue, Richard exclaimed. 
truly impressed by Jake's ability to defeat the twins using words alone. As for Alicia, she had already lowered her head in shame, not daring to look at anyone else. Although she was disgusted by Jake's words, she did not blame him as she had in the past. She knew better now that when facing an enemy, a true warrior had to use all skills at their disposal. Yet when Bartleby heard Jake's words, he was so angry that his face turned pale. He could only shake his head and smile bitterly. At the same time, he scolded with a smile. How could I accept such a little jerk as my disciple? Indeed, Jake was shameless in his use of verbal sparring. But in his opinion, verbal confrontation was divided into two types of situations. In one version, the speaker was quite restrained and subtle, and essentially defeated their opponent passively through the use of enraging phrases. The second type was an all-out verbal assault full of curses and vulgarities. In his method, Jake sought to combine the two types and thus form the ultimate advantage. Up to this point, it had worked beautifully for him, even though it tended to cause problems in his interpersonal relationships. He continued, I am sorry you are so upset. I was simply explaining a scientific theory. I had no idea you would take it so personally. He sighed in the face of the twins, who had lost their mind in anger. Then, after delivering this brutal sentence, he waved his spirit blade in the air. At the same time, he assessed his chances. If they combined forces to use the joint attack, the Rose Brothers would be powerful. Even if Jake wanted to kill them, it would take a long time. But after being restricted by the force, the power of their joint attacks had dropped by nine levels. Facing Jake, who was far stronger than them, they didn't last long. In a matter of moments, both of them had fallen at Jake's hands. The young Hampton family warrior proceeded to snatch their storage bags and spirit weapons, and then continued to the Justice Pavilion. He was able to make it about 100 feet before again being stopped by an opponent. This disciple was also at the peak essence gathering stage, and his body too was emitting a divine soul stage aura. Yet Jake could tell right away that this opponent was not as reckless as Averick, nor did he seem foolish enough to attempt to match Jake at the art of verbal sparring. Instead, he drew on his observations of Jake's preceding bouts, as well as the warning from the longevity period warriors in the Justice Peak to attack Jake from a distance of more than 200 feet using the sword force and hidden weapons. Unfortunately, Although the opponent's idea was not bad, the actual effect was much weaker than expected. First of all, the energy formed by the sword force was weakened bit by bit when it entered the range of the force. When the sword force was 50 feet from Jake, it completely lost its energy and turned into nothingness. The hidden weapon with a huge amount of poison, on the other hand, was not even as effective as the sword force. After entering the range of the Force, it was completely frozen. After using more than 30 Sword Force techniques, this opponent shot out more than 100 hidden weapons, yet none could penetrate the Force. In the end, Jake ignored him and continued to approach the Justice Pavilion. The Sword Force was useless, and the hidden weapons were useless. The Disciples of Justice Peak immediately became anxious. They couldn't help but raise their heads to look at Misha, hoping to get some idea of what to do next. Yet Misha was transfixed by Jake, who continued rushing forward. He gritted his teeth and stamped his foot, then decided to take a risk. All of you attack now, full force! Misha ordered the 170 ordinary disciples who had gathered behind him.